Hi, it's Player Ban! Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Traveler the AI Story. Alright, so in the last episode, we took the dark chapter over here and we met some uh, pretty interesting characters. It was really, um, I guess, cool to see how closely the characters kept on with the plotline, but also how uh, loosely some of them did too, especially at the ending. I'm really curious to see uh, if there were any like changes to that. I know there was recently an update, but I, I don't know if that was like an update to the storyline or anything like that. But anyways, our next chapter here is Desert. I guess uh, we will find unordinary friends in order to search for the treasure in a very hostile place. And, you know, if you guys are here just, uh, you know, not uh, caring too much about the chapter itself, I would just actually just recommend looking at the pictures because uh, they're actually really pretty. Um, and uh, some of the character creation is uh, pretty nice too. So yeah, all right, uh, let's get started. You look around. It is a desert with small mountains far away. There are no people, animals, or buildings here. You go to the nearest mountain and start climbing it. Soon you reach the top. The view from here is breathtaking. You see an ocean of sand stretching as far as you can see. A strange reddish-brown haze fills the sky above you, casting an eerie glow over everything. There must be some sort of oasis somewhere. The desert stretches on for miles, but there's nothing at all except sand until you uh, reach the horizon, where it ends in a dark cloud hanging over the sea of sand. Your eyes trace the distant outline of another mountain range, just like the one you're standing on now, if only you could climb that high. But then again, maybe not. Your legs already feel exhausted from reaching the top of yours, and how would you ever make it back down? A loud crack snaps you out of your trance. Oh, what was that? It sounds like thunder rumbling overhead, but you don't hear any rain falling. As you stare up into the reddened sky, you realize what happened. It wasn't lightning, it was the shadow cast by something passing between you and the sun. A ship sails through the clouds, cutting right across the line separating sunlight from darkness. The vessel looks old and battered, but you had never seen such an amazing sight before. Oh, this is a really cool picture. I love the, uh, the hues here, especially the purple and the pink and the yellow. You've heard stories about flying ships that travel faster than horses, carrying adventurers to foreign lands. Maybe they'll take me home if I tell them my story. I'm guessing that's what uh, Dreamer just said. You dash over to the edge of the cliff, waving your arms fiercely to catch the attention of anyone on board. Oh, what's going on here? Help! I need help, please! The ship sails closer, and its red flag with black wings catches the wind. Its large billowing sails looks like a giant bird, ready to fly away. A man dressed in dark blue leather armor stares back at you, his expression grim. He doesn't wave or nod when he sees you, but simply lowers a long wooden pole towards you. Get inside. We cannot afford to waste our time on lost children. You glance around, hoping for someone else to appear and rescue you. No one comes running from the nearby hills, so you do as the sailor instructed, run towards the boat. Once on board, you are pushed roughly into one of the empty benches in order to sit still while everyone finishes securing the ship's mooring lines. The deck is covered in ropes, and even though you can't see all the crew, you hear them scurrying all over the place, making sure the ship is completely prepared for the journey ahead. They seem incredibly busy. One of the sailor pulls you from the seat, dragging you towards an opening in the deck. It leads down into what appears to be some sort of cargo hold. You try to resist him, but it's useless. You're far too weak to struggle across a strong stranger. With a jerk, the man pushes open the door and tosses you unceremoniously inside. Your breath catches in your throat as soon as you step foot on the cold floor. The air smells musty and stale, like the scent of dry leaves and wet earth after a rain shower. Okay, I have to admit, these are that's a pretty cool, pretty cool line right here. A really cool descriptive line. The air smells musty and stale, like the scent of dried leaves and wet earth after a rain shower. Like, like that's in a poem right there. Something scratches beneath your feet. Maybe rats or mice living here? For whatever reason, that thought makes you feel slightly better about being thrown into their den. Ooh, who is this? Karina. What do we have here? A little mouse who thinks he can travel alone? 
You turn to find a dark-haired girl standing before you. She looks to be a couple years younger than you, with the skin of coffee beans. Also, how old is Dreamer? Her eyes are as green as emeralds, her nose thin and sharp like a blade, and she has lips that could cut grass with the slightest touch. Everything about her seems so dangerous. Don't look at me. I'm no friend of Travelers. I don't mean any harm. You shake out your cape and smooth back your hair, hoping to make yourself look more appealing to the people on board the ship. Maybe if they saw how harmless I am, they would help me get home? Well then, what business do you have in my world? She sounds bored, as though she'd rather just throw you overboard right now instead of bothering you uh, with answering your questions. My name's Karina, and this is Amit. A tall man wearing thick leather armor steps into view besides the girl. His face is hidden under a metal helm that covers his entire head, except for two holes for eye holes and a long slip for breathing. He stares at you with cold blue eyes and gives a single nod. It's impossible to read his expression, though, that helmet, but he doesn't seem very friendly. Oh, Amit looks uh, pretty darn cool here. We're looking for adventurers to take on our newest mission. Only experienced heroes would be considered. You raise an eyebrow at him. Uh, what sort of new mission? The one that can only be completed by children like yourselves. Oh, jeez. It pays well, and once you complete it, we'll bring you all home safely, or not, as you may prefer. She snorts rudely and turns away from you, as though she had already given up on you. Yeah, is there anything else we need to know about the mission? Only that the risk level is extremely high. We have heard rumors of monsters living in the desert, creatures beyond even the most dangerous of beasts. He points at a nearby table with several maps spread out upon its surface, each of them covered in scribbled writing. You glance down at your handwritten map and realize he was right. You haven't seen a single village or town since leaving civilization. There must be some way out of this place, but how far is too far? You wonder how you could possibly reach the edge of the world and return home before the time limits runs out. Oh, what do I have to do uh, to earn this reward? What is the mission? Just show us that you are brave enough to stand against danger when others cower in fear. The man with dark skin waves his arm and fist in the air as he speaks. His words sound angry instead of excited. Maybe he really doesn't want to take me along after all, thought Dreamer. You stare at him silently for a few moments, considering what he's saying. Do you dare trust these people? But then again, they rescued from certain death, didn't they? What other choices do you have? If you stay here, you're sure to die trying to survive on your own in the middle of nowhere. Ah, oh, very well. I'll go wherever you need me to. Good. She reaches into her pocket and produces a small leather pouch filled with shiny gems. She flips it open and shoves a handful of glittering rocks towards you. Uh, take them, and use them however you wish. Oh, I guess this is her talking. Take them, and use them however you wish. You don't know what she expects you to do with them, so you just stash them away inside your satchel. For now, at least. Hopefully, once we get there, we can find more useful equipment than just a bag of worthless stones. Uh, where are we going now? The woman in black answers you, sounding less, uh, slightly less annoyed at the prospect of traveling with another child. Uh, Desert Karina, we sail north until morning, where we will drop in an anchor near the ruins. You may choose which area of the city to explore first. Uh, ruins? The knight steps forward to answer you. We heard stories about some kind of ancient ruin that no one has dared into for years, or even before that, if I'm being honest. He chuckles humorously behind his helm. Some say the place is cursed and should never be disturbed. Ooh, this is like some, you know, blueprints that aren't blue. <laughs> but this is actually a, like, I don't know, it looks like it could be in like some uh, video game concept art book. He steps aside to reveal another map spread out on a nearby table. The writing is faded. Maybe it's old. It looks like it might be a drawing of a building, a tower. So this is why you called me here. You point at the sketch, or maybe it's a painting? Why this tower? Karina takes notice of your interest. This was once a mighty fortress built centuries ago by the descendants of a forgotten race. They were powerful sorcerers who lived in the castle until the archdemon came to destroy them all. This is what remains of their home. If only you had known this earlier, you are suddenly gripped with a sense of excitement. It's not often you get a chance to discover something new. But how can you know this? Word travels fast among those who live here. Everyone knows what the Archdemon and its army of demons. We grew up hearing stories of their terrible power. 
She glances at the knight next to her and then leans in to whisper. We know because we fought them. Ooh, this is a nice looking desert. She decides to step outside and look at the desert. You follow her outside into the bright light of day. The sun is shining brightly, casting everything in a golden hue. And I guess in the story, uh, the ship landed uh, back into the desert. You can't help but squint your eyes, feeling as though the rays are burning into your brain. It's hot out there, so much hotter than you expected. After a quick survey of the land, Karina returns to the open doorway and leans across to one side. She crosses her arms over her chest and sighs. Not exactly the same as living in the forest, is it? You laugh quietly. That's true, but I guess I can make do. You look around and admit. He looks like he's having fun. On the other hand, you don't think the big man is enjoying himself much, despite the fact that he looks so tough. You decide to start asking questions. Uh, can I ask you something, Amit? The man in the leather armor glares at you for a moment, and then turns away. You shrug and continue. Uh, what do you think of the desert? He grunts, as though he isn't interested in the conversation. It's fine. How come? I mean, I've been walking through the sand all morning and it feels like I'm doing nothing but walking deep into the desert. What does it matter? Oh, I just wondered if you felt any differently about the heat. He stalks off towards the ship's prow, muttering to himself. You watch him walk away, wondering what he meant by his comment. You look around. There are many things that catch your eye. The rocky hills surrounding you, the vast expanse of sand ahead, the tiny bits of vegetation clinging to life in the dunes. Above all else, however, you can't ignore the massive mountains in the distance. You know they exist, but you've never seen such a thing. You can't imagine how big they truly are, how far up they climb into the sky. Have you ever seen these mountains before? No, but I've heard they were once higher. Oh wait, sorry. <laughs> sorry, this is Karina. No, but I've heard they, once they were once higher. They've grown smaller as the peaks have eroded over the years. Alright, then let's hurry up and get there. The ship flies over the desert. Soon the mountains grow larger, looming above you. Their jagged edges stretch high into the air, while the peaks grow taller and steeper, more and more impressive. Even from afar, you can see how majestic and awe-inspiring they must be. They look impossibly tall, as though they might reach into the clouds. No one has ever climbed before, and yet, maybe someday someone will. Look, do you see the entrance? You scan the mountainside, and sure enough, you can just make out the cave entrance. It's not much farther now. As soon as we get close, the gates will open. Wow. This is really cool. Soon, you see the opening in the mountain. The glowing stone archway stands tall, stretching between two towering spires. It looks like it carved out a solid rock itself. Beyond the gate, you can see the interior of the fortress. Open the gate and make sure no one comes to investigate. The gate begins to glow softly, then opens slowly in a cloud of dust. Inside the cavern lies a maze of stone walls, winding paths and hallways. It almost looks like a labyrinth. Let's go. Follow me carefully. You follow after her and admit as they lead you deep into the mountain. The walls are made of rough and finished stone, and narrow windows allowing in faint sunlight. Once in a while, you spot a set of stairs leading down deep underground. Now and then, you hear strange noises echoing through the corridors, clinks and clangs and screams in the distance. Are those monsters? Or something worse? Ooh, where are we now? The stone buildings become progressively older, the passage is darker. Finally, a mitt stops abruptly in front of a door, and motions for you to stop. Wait here. He knocks on the thick wood once, twice. The door swings open to reveal a gloomy hallway with flickering torches lining the walls. You hesitate, unsure if you should follow, but Amit waves you on and you reluctantly step inside. It's all right, nothing dangerous here. Whoa. Now that is cool. It's like we're inside of a of a of a cave and there's like a whole like I don't know biome inside this cave. Suddenly the door uh, the floor beneath you uh, feet. Sorry, <laughs> I messed it up there. Suddenly, the floor beneath your feet starts to rumble. Damp earth begins to crack under your boots, crumbling to powdery dirt. Something dark appears in the distance. Your eyes struggle to adjust to the gloom. Suddenly, you feel a cold chill run down your spine. Is that? 
Something moves in the darkness. There's a sudden cry of pain. A shadow falls across your vision, blocking your view. No, not a shadow. Your heart pounds fiercely as you freeze. The creature is huge, taller than you. Its skin and bones have been picked clean. There's nothing left but a layer of mummified flesh. It's a horror you can barely believe. Its teeth are sharp, and it bears a long tongue that licks the air. It's hungry, it sees you, it wants to devour you. Don't move, Amit shouts, or it will eat you. You're trembling in fear. What's happening? Why do you feel as though you're in danger? You can't remember anything. You can't think clearly. Uh, stay still. Forget what you saw. The beast is looking right at you. You can't breathe, can't speak. You try to scream, but... Shh, just pretend it's gone. You nod, whimpering, whimpering quietly. You remember the fear that seized you, but you don't understand what happened. What did it want from you? You can only watch in silence as the monster disappears into the shadows. You wipe the sweat from your forehead, trying to calm yourself down. The shaking has not stopped since you entered this place. You look at the night. Did that really happen? He doesn't respond. His face is locked in grim determination. He seems to be searching for something, or someone as though he's desperate to find someone, somewhere. Come on, we must hurry. We haven't got time for questions. Is he talking about what happened just now, or something else? You can't tell. Either way, he's serious, and so are you. You take his words for it and hurry after him. For whatever reason, Amit decides to guide you through the maze of caves. The stone walls are damp and cool, and the sounds of dripping water echo through the halls. You walk for quite a bit. It feels like hours, but you sure you won't? You couldn't be more than an hour. Are we getting closer? He pauses and then shakes his head. Not yet. We need to keep going. You wonder what will happen when you reach the end of the maze. Will it open up into another room? If so, what will you discover? Keep moving. Don't slow down. He looks over his shoulder at you. Do you not feel this place? You shake your hand. Uh, I don't know what you mean, uh, should I? No, this isn't normal. The magic in these places, it changes people. It makes them forget what they've seen. Uh, how do you know all this? He looks back at the entrance, the corridor, shaking his head. Never mind, there's no time for this. You follow a mitt deeper into the mountain. In the distance, you hear a sound, a low groan, like the wind blowing in the middle of a storm. It go echoes throughout the tunnels, growing louder with each passing moment. Soon, the whole place is filled with the sounds. It grows so loud you have to cover your ears. Finally, Amit stops. Here it is! He steps forward and pulls open the heavy door, revealing a small chamber with nothing but three stone tables inside. There are candles burning on the walls and an old book laying on one of the tables. Karina rushes past you both and kneels before the books. She opens it, its covers and starts reading aloud from it as she searches for something hidden within its pages. Yes, this is it. She closes the book and lays it aside. Then she pokes open a silver box, which lies next to the table. With a glance of a mint, she hands it to, uh, she hands it to you. Here it is, the final puzzle piece. You hold the box in your hands and examine it. You don't recognize the shape or design. It looks ancient and complicated, like a complicated machine. You look up at a mint. Uh, what is it? That's the key to get where you're going. Now you simply have to put this onto the box. You stare at it. Uh, but what does it do? It's a tool. A device to access another world. The tools you use to navigate to a place like this are all different. This one is called the Key of Infinite Light. Uh, infinite Light? That sounds like a fairy tale. Perhaps, but it's real. He, he touches the box. You do likewise. Instantly, the lights in the room begin to flicker. The candles on the wall glow brighter. The entire chamber is illuminated in soft golden light. Now you must turn the key clockwise and make sure to keep turning until it turns completely round. Do not stop until you reach the end. You turn the knob. A strange whirling sensation passes through the box. You can feel it, almost though the box is spinning around on its own. Good. Almost done. Suddenly, the whirring stops. The air stops flowing. The kernels burn out. All that remains is darkness. Without warning, the box shatters. Pieces of glass fly everywhere, hitting you hard in the face. <laughs> Ouch! Silence fills the chamber. For a moment, you freeze, unsure what to do. 
Now that the whirlpool of energy is gone, you realize how dark the room actually is. How black. Everything is pitch black, and the air is heavy with the smell of smoke. You can hardly see a thing. Did I... did I break it? You touch the shards of broken glass in your hand. They cut your fingers, but you squeeze gently. Suddenly, the pieces start to glow softly. As you watch, the lights grow brighter, illuminating the chamber in a warm glow. Ah, oh, look! In the distance, something glimmers. You strain your eyes, trying to make out what it is. It's shimmering reflection, reflecting off a pool of water. You squint, and soon you see it. A mirror! An enormous gl gilded mirror! But it isn't just any mirror. It's bigger than any mirror you've seen before. It stretches farther than I can see, longer than the longest road in the kingdom. It reflects everything. You can see the distant mountains reflected in the depths below, and the stars above. It is beautiful. It is a portal. It would take us to where we need to go. The way Emit reacts surprises you. He stands up and looks at the mirror with something akin to awe. Indeed, this is a portal. This will allow us to pass through, which means we are almost there. He takes the mirror from Karina. She follows him eagerly, and together they step into the glowing circle of light. The portal swallows him up, and suddenly you find yourself standing alone in darkness. You decide to enter into the portal. After all, you're close now. You will get there eventually. As you cross through the shimmering calm of light, you feel a strange sensation. First you hear a low, dull hum, like the buzzing of bees. It continues as you pass through, making it impossible for you to think. Second, you feel as though you're sinking into a deep pit, like there's something sucking your feet and dragging you down into the ground. You can't breathe. You try to scream, but it's as though your voice has vanished into thin air. Suddenly, you come to an abrupt halt. You fail to your knees, landing hard against the earth. You gasp for breath, striving to break free of this endless sludge. Through the haze of mist, you faintly catch sight of something familiar. A tall man in white robes walks towards you. He's calm as if nothing untoward was happening. He approaches slowly. Jonas! What does Jonas look like? Welcome to the world beyond. It is an honor to finally meet you. His words are as soft and sweet as the wind, yet somehow they fill you with terror. Who... who are you? The man smiles. My name is Jonas, and I am the keeper of this gate. Jonas, keeper of this gate? Is this some kind of test, you wonder? Are you supposed to show this man what you can do, or have him teach you something? Your mind spins, trying to grasp the meaning behind this encounter. I've been waiting for you. You are the last in line. You look at him. Uh, me? You are the last person I expected to arrive here today. But you are the last in line. That's why you came. Uh, Amit and Karina here? They're nearby, but they cannot join us yet. For now you must wait. Only you can take us to where we belong. Wow. You look up at the sky, wondering where this place is. One world ends and another begins? Where would that be? Perhaps it is a place known only by those who live there, or perhaps it is a place everyone knows. Until now, it was lost to the ages. Uh, what is my role in all of this? Jonas laughs and takes your hand gently in his. You don't need me to explain that. You already know. You were meant to be here. This place is destiny, so instead of asking questions, you should learn to listen, to pay attention. Can you help me? Of course, if you let me, but you must first help yourself. How do I do that? He claps his hands. Then you must simply open your mind, learn to trust yourself, open your heart, and listen carefully. Okay. He smiles and takes your hand again. Follow me, let's go. You stand up with a single motion, he lifts you into the air. The world seems to spin around you and you struggle to keep your balance. For once, you wish you could see exactly what's going on. Soon, however, you realize he isn't lifting you anywhere. Instead, he puts you down gently on the ground. Come, we must hurry. Jonas leads you away from the chamber. The passage is wide and well lit by countless candles. It stretches far ahead and the floor is made entirely of glass. The air smells of sand and dust and it feels cool against your skin. You can see a strange pattern etched into the surface of glass, like a winding river of infinite length. It stretches in the distance and you realize it goes on forever. Where are we going? All paths lead to the same place. So the way is clear, said the, <laughs> so the, uh, 
<laughs> Kesh Keshar Cat from uh, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, is this where we're going? You point to the swirling waters. Not quite. This is a shortcut. You walk along the path, you will reach your destination much faster, but then you might miss something important. So you must choose your direction carefully. Don't wander too far. Remember, you only have one chance. Wow, look at this place. You wonder briefly about the meaning behind this. Why does Jonas want you to take the shortcut? What purpose does it serve? Remember, you are the last one you can take us home. Home? You mean Amit and Karina? The world? I thought they left. Their journey comes to an end here, which means so does yours. Once you leave this place, your part in the story will be over, and when they return, your stories will begin anew. You follow the flowing pattern of the river, heading deeper into the passages. You can sense the corridors getting narrower. Soon, you'll have to duck. There's no time to waste. We must hurry. We might not lose you. We must not lose you. Is this the place? Do you see it? The gateway? Yes, I can see it. Excellent. Then let's go. Jonas grabs your hands and drags you forward. The way is narrow and difficult to maneuver through. Eventually, the wall begins to curve around and the tunnel widens to a long chamber. There, you can see the shining gates of a city. On either side of the game, gate, shimmering columns stretch higher than the tallest mountain peak. The entire structure is carved with intricate carvings. In the center lies the giant pool of water and a single bridge stretches across it. That's it. Our destination. Can you see it? Whoa. Now this is cool. You peer closer at the gate. The carvings are etched with symbols, faces, animal, birds, flowers. You recognize many of them, even though you've never seen these things before. You know their names. You know what they represent. You understand. It is beautiful. It is a sign. It marks our way home. Just remember that and you will be fine. Jonas leads you to the edge of the pool. It is cold. Too cold to touch. But you feel compelled to step onto the bridge anyway. You cross and continue until you reach the other side. Behind you, you hear a voice call out. Wait! You turn around. Amit and Karina are walking towards you, carrying something in their arms. A lamp. It hangs from a chain and shines brightly, casting shadows on the stone walls. It is good to see you, but we need a little more time if this is where we're supposed to be. Yes, I agree. This isn't quite the right place. As soon as you watch, you know Submit and Karina have turned the lamp upon themselves. Both of them look different. Older. More distinguished. They seem at ease as though they have just returned from a long journey. I think I know what is wrong. Please forgive us for being late. No, it is alright. This is precisely where we're supposed to be. Then please, we must hurry. Forgive us and come inside. I will. Together, the two friends walk towards the gates. You follow closely behind, feeling as though you are intruding on private business. As soon as they disappear within gates, however, you change your mind. You step forward and run to catch up. Hey, wait, please don't go in there. Amit turns around, his eyes widen as he takes in your appearance. Don't worry, everything will, everything is okay. Really? Because it doesn't look like it to me. Do you think you're really ready for this? Have you learned enough? Have you changed at all since we parted company? Perhaps a little bit, and I'm older, like you said, but then again, so are you. Age means nothing. In life, you can only learn, grow, and advance. Age is merely a number, not a measure of wisdom. Besides who we are, our journey is complete. Then we must hurry. We must walk fast and go inside before anyone else arrives. You're right. We must hurry. Wow, where are we now? The three of you enter the gates together. Inside the walls, the streets are paved with gold. The buildings are carved with marble and painted in vibrant colors. It is a magnificent place. You will, you hear a singing throughout, a drifting through the air. Children are laughing and women sing. The air is sweet and warm, and it brings back memories at home. This is our place, our home. Are you sure? Does it really feel like home to you? Oh yes. This is the place that brought us together. It is the place that saved our lives. It is beautiful. Now let's go in. You promised that you would show us the way. This way. Follow the road until the ends. Then you will find our house. It will show you everything. 
You step off the pathway and take a closer look at the city. It is wondrous and beautiful beyond compare. You can tell that the people living here love it. This is where they belong. It's their home. You follow Amit and Karina away from the main venue, walking deeper into the crowded streets. Finally, you reach a corner where the buildings become taller and the roads narrow. You pass a few people, each staring curiously at your strange clothing, but otherwise you are alone. Uh, what is this place called? Where are we now? This is where we grew up. This is where we were born. Born? When did this happen? Long ago before you were born. This is the place where we lived, grew, and learned how to live. This is our home. This is ours. Can you remember? Can you remember anything of this place? Of course. Every day, every moment, this place was in my thoughts. I dreamt of this place, night after night. I knew this place was special, that it was where I belonged, which is why we came back. To bring you home? This is why you were traveling? Exactly. We need to find you, to lead you home. So we followed the signs. The signs led us here, and now, finally, our journey is over. And now, we will show you. They walk farther into the city. The streets get busier. The buildings become taller. Soon you can bar barely see the sky. All you see is gold. Endless streams of golden light pouring into the air. You feel as though you're floating, as if the whole city is moving beneath your feet. Finally, Amit stops. He places his hands on your shoulders and looks deeply into your eyes. Welcome home, he tells you. He opens the door to a tall building. It is carved from marble and a painted bright yellow. Two giant pillars support the roof, while colorful decorations are carved into the front facade. Atop the pillars rests a large bell. The steps leading up in the mountain entrance are made of white marble. They gleam in the sunlight and sparkle. In the middle of the stars stands a statue of a smiling boy. He holds a hammer high above his head. Over the head of his head, here there lies a crown upon which sits the shining key. Upon his chest, carved in the skin, runs the glowing word, Hope. Hope. This is the symbol of our world, of our city. Hope is the magic that keeps us alive. Hope is the thing that makes us happy. Hope is what has keeps us going, and all of us together. Hope is magic. Without hope, life loses its meaning. The key is our symbol. It is our promise of our land. When you see the symbol, or any of our signs, it means that you are home. The way will be open before you. The path is clear. You must rest easy knowing your journey is almost done. Keep the key. Hold it close. Never forget. Keep it safe and cherish it. I will. I will hold it and keep it. Goodbye until we meet again. Both of them bow their heads and then turn away from you. They walk down the stairs and leave you standing there alone. You stand in the doorway, gazing out over the city. It is a wonderful sight. All right, so I guess uh, we got this key from the desert. What's the next chapter here? Underwater, uncovering riches and the inspected allies in the deep. Okay, that's going to be... I'm excited to see the uh, images that will be created there. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. It, it was um, it was interesting to see where the plot line kind of took us in the story. So I guess we started with Dreamer in a desert. You know, he comes uh, upon this boat or the ship floating in the sky. He hops on that boat. He meets Karina and Amit. And they're all like, we got to take you on this dangerous uh, journey into this temple to find this uh, treasure we're looking for. Super dangerous, and uh, we're taking you because you're a kid. <laughs> and Dreamer goes, all right. And somehow that excites him. So uh, we we, we, uh, we land, I guess, in a desert, and we travel on. We uh, arrive to this, you know, like cave, mountain area, with some temples. We go inside, we meet this creature. It's a creepy looking creature, but it doesn't do anything to it. Amit's like, don't look at it, and it won't do anything. And we're like, okay, cool. We continue traveling and we reach this this mirror. We step into the mirror and we go into a, this, this new land and we meet a guy named Jonas. Unfortunately, we don't see a picture of Jonas. So it would have been cool to see that, but we didn't see any pictures of Jonas. Um, we we continuously see a picture of Karina though, even though she's not there. But Jonas, you know, leads us uh, to the way to this uh, area. Um, and we go into this area, which is like this entrance to the city. 
Uh, we go into the city, you know, we meet Karina and Mitt there, and they're all like, hey, you know, this is where we were born, this is where we, we learn to live. And we, we get into the statue of this child, and, you know, on the statue says hope, and then they go talking about how, you know, hope is the key to living, it keeps us alive and everything. And then they hand us the key, and then that's pretty much it. So. It's, it's interesting. We start in a desert and then we, we end up in a totally different place, which is kind of what, you know, we kind of see in the previous chapters too. We kind of start somewhere and then we end somewhere totally different, which is totally fine. I really enjoy like seeing all the pictures that were created from the AI. Really cool stuff. It would actually be super cool if we can see more like monster designs. I think that would be like, I don't know, pretty cool concept. Um, and I wish that we could see um, more images that relate back to the text. That that would be cool too, because there were some really interesting descriptions in the details that were read, but it didn't necessarily reflect, you know, the image that we saw. But um, I, I still love the pictures. I think they're very beautiful. I think the storylines are interesting, and I can't wait to see what kind of images and music we see in the underwater chapter. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed uh, this chapter, and I will see you all next time. Thanks so much. See you then.